listen very, very carefully. This message may save your life one day. So it's important that you pay a close attention. I speak for a few minutes and we're going to pray on what I call the prophetic and the demonic. The prophetic and the what? Demonic. These are the last days. And one of the signs of the last days is a revival of demonic activities. I will not deceive you. I must tell you the truth. In the last days, the Bible says, perilous time shall come. It didn't say perilous time may come. It said they shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, seducers, haters of good things, unthankful. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. In the last days, he said, dangerous times shall come. We, you and I, we are living in very dangerous times. The Bible also says that in the last days, evil men and seducers, they shall work stronger and stronger. At least, all those people with demonic power, they will increase. Evil people will become more wicked. And you can see the wickedness happening all around. It is important for us to be able to make a connection between the prophetic and the demonic activities that are going on now. The Lord is looking for warriors to arrest the demonic and devastating attack that is going on now. The question is, will you be one of them that the Lord will use? Good. The scarcity of the power of God in any generation is not because God does not want to give out power. It is because of non-availability of materials. God is not looking for the talented. He's not looking for the educated. He's not looking for degrees. He's not looking for those things. He's just looking for those who will be available. That is, they are qualified for it. I want the power of God. I want the power of God. God himself is looking for people that he will give the power to. Because he says the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro, searching, searching, searching. Once he finds a man, he locates a man, he bombards the man with power. I'm praying for somebody here today. But by the time you leave this prophetic congress, you will become a terror to your enemies. <laughs> Let your enemy rule at thunder. One of the happiest days in my life. I'm telling you the truth from my heart now. What's our topic again? Good. One of the happiest days in my life was at the headquarters. Oh, I was so happy that day. I was so, so happy that day. I was in my counseling room. All of a sudden, there was terrible noise outside. Three men were shouting, Let us go inside. Let us go and see him. You people have no right to shield this man away from us. We must see him today. We must see him. We must see him. They were making us say, But you don't have an appointment. Say, Appointment by foot. We must see him. Blah, 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 blah. They were shouting. Then I heard one of them saying, If you don't allow us to see this man, we shall burn down this place. Ah. They will burn down. So. <laughs> So when I heard we shall burn down this place, I came out. I said, let them in. So these three men walked into my office. I said, sit down. They said, no. I'm not sitting down. Any, is there anything I can do to help? 
I said, are you the general overseer? I said, yes. I said, well, I'm not expecting somebody as young as you are, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I bring that bag, bring that bag, bring that bag. Somebody brought a bag. Then they brought a brown envelope of money out of the bag. Say, so, sir, take this money. We have come here to report one member of your church who lives in our house. He got into our house six months ago. He paid three years rent. This is the rent. Take it. But sir, tell him to pack out of our house immediately. He has spent six months, but no problem, but three years if he paid, that's it. Just tell him to pack out. I said, why? They said, because since this man moved into our house, nobody has been able to attend witchcraft meeting. One of them said, even as he's standing there talking to me, that his wife is on the sick bed because the wife could not attend a witchcraft meeting, so they disciplined her. I pinched myself to convince myself that I was not seeing a vision. And I said, hey, Excuse me, sir. Please, excuse me. Excuse me, please. So, are you saying you are witches? They say yes. Yes. That's what we're saying. So, uh, is, is the man very insulting, very rude, or very uncooperative? He said, no. He's a perfect gentleman. But immediately it is 12 midnight. He will begin to speak some strange languages and begin to pray. And immediately it starts, the whole house will become hot. There will be fire everywhere. All the roots that we're using to go to witchcraft meeting, there are some people is calling angels. They are blocking the roots. Say, sir, we are not speaking any grammar again. Take this money, ask this man to leave the place. That's all. That's what we are going to say. And they walked out. After the workout, I was very happy. Beloved, that exactly is what should be happening. The powers of darkness should see us and run. Amen. Why, why was I extremely glad? Because it is a far departure from the kind of story I hear. Geo, pray for me, they are pressing my neck. Geo, pray for me, they have swallowed my husband's leg. Geo, pray for me, they are feeding me. In fact, they fed me so much, I felt the okra in my mouth when I woke up. Geo, that's the kind of story I, I, I hear. But this one is, is far the passion, and that is supposed to be our position. The question is, why is it not happening like that? Or are there nobody listening to me here today that they still come to press you down on the bed? Why should they press a prophet down on the bed? Why should they appear in your dream carrying weapons and you are not able to say, come here, bring that weapon. I command you right now, use it to destroy yourself. And right there, in that dream, you have not woken up, they have destroyed themselves. Then you wake up to do praise worship. But rather, they will have done everything they wanted to do in the dream. Then you now wake up, Father, Father, Father. This is where we are going today. So this is why we need prayers. We need, I tell you, we really need prayers. Honestly. We need prayers. If all of you here 
were or are prophets. Nigeria will have changed. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Everything is they waited. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as evil. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fit. Once they wait upon God. If you could see the heart cry of God in heaven, his greatest heart cry is that there is no laborer for this harvest. No laborer. There's, there's the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Even the few laborers are fighting themselves. They're busy, busy fighting themselves. Even the few laborers, they are still preaching to some people, please don't commit fornication, please don't tell lies, just all those primary school messages. They are still preaching it and preaching it and preaching it over and over again. This is where the problem lies. The only office that has capacity to deal with the demonic it is the office of the prophet. Elijah was a fireman. Elijah rough handle demons. May you receive power to rough handle demons. Because if you do not rough handle them, they will rough handle you. Elijah received, took, received the anointing to humiliate demons. Elijah made demons cry out like dogs. Elijah made demons to cry out for mercy. The prophetic ministry of Elijah made enemies to depart in a hurry. They ran off. Elijah upset the world. He worried the devil. He gave wicked rulers sleepless nights. Elijah. So the demonic can only be rough handled by the prophets. But where are the prophets to rough handle them? When the great apostle Joseph Babala died, we heard officially that the demons gathered to celebrate. That that man that troubles our life is gone. They were believed that is gone. That's no point. In coming to a congress like this, you come there the way you want and you go home the way you want. No. That's no point. This doesn't make sense. But if you decide, that I want to key into what this man is saying. He's saying something. I need to key. Because once the power of God comes upon you, you are the first beneficiary. You first of all benefit yourself. Then you can go out and benefit others. That's why Moses said, Woe to God that all men were prophets. That's what Moses said in Numbers 11. Say, Woe to God and all of everybody. Let them be prophets. Are you a prophet or a parrot? And when we are talking about the minister of the prophetic, it's not just a. You can say, Shimbaba, Shimbaba, Shimbaba. That's said the Lord. That's said the Lord. That's said the Lord. That's said the Lord. I'm with you, my people. I'm with you, my people. I'm with you. It's be unto you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He says, you, you, come out here. Yeah, you, come, yeah, come out here. Give them as a bill, you come out here. And he comes and says, hey, uh, uh, your mother is a woman. No. There are six dangerous activities the demonic are doing now. And we must arrest it. I need to take those six dangerous activities with you one by one. Then go into the area where this has to be arrested. If you pray here this afternoon and you lose your voice, or we are not even able to you are, not even, you are not even able to go home on time because the anointing of God upon your life has kept you there. And then you leave this place and you become a terror to the enemy. You have done a good bargain. But if you come here and you go home the way you came, it is a terrible tragedy. The first activity of the demonic that is so dangerous is that they leave and they return. They leave and then later return to the same person. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Matthew 12, 43. If you are there, say yes. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. This is the first very dangerous activity. Matthew 12, 43. Are you there now? When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then what happens? Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And the entering and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. One activity of the demonic is to go and regather strength and then go back. If you are following me, say yes. You say, but why is that dangerous? It means, if you are praying, Lord, deliver me from this affliction, deliver me from this affliction, and the affliction goes away. That affliction that has gone did not go far. It's just watching the former habitation. And then they now double or triple or make their strength sevenfold and come against the person. And before you say Jesus is Lord, the person may be dead. This is why some people they come for deliverance. After the deliverance, there is a counter attack after the deliverance and they never survive it. I'm praying for somebody here. Every counter attack of the enemy against your life shall backfire. It's about fire. 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 fire. In the name of Jesus. So they counter attack. The second activity of the demonic that is so dangerous is that they take away the word of God from people's hearts. They take the word of God away from people's hearts. According to Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Matthew 13, 19. When one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then covet the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. 
This is he which receives seed by the wayside. The demonic have the power to take the word of God from people's hearts and the person is empty. This is why it's so easy for us to memorize useless materials. But when it comes to the Bible, we forget easily. If I put that one of our brothers or sisters and I say, okay, okay, I give you the microphone. Tell me the names of the disciples of Jesus, all twelve. You may discover that they may not be able to remember five or six. But if I say, tell me the, the, the players in Green Eagles, he will remember everybody, including the coach and the reserve. But now, the disciples of Jesus cannot remember. It's because there is a power that takes away the word of God from people's hearts. The third activity of the demonic that is very dangerous is that the blind mind to blind the mind. In 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. They can blind a person's heart. So no matter what gospel you preach, no matter how much prayer you pray, no matter how many prophecies you give, it does not affect them. Their mind is already blinded. It's a dangerous activity indeed. The first dangerous activity of the demonic, and which is affecting us terribly now, is that they can disguise as angel of light. They disguise as angel of light. They walk in disguises. They masquerade. According to Second Corinthians 11 verse 14. 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And it's a terrible thing when the devil comes to you, you think he's a friend. Because he's transformed to deceive you. The fifth dangerous activity of the powers of darkness is that they wrestle with us day and night. According to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians 6 12. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. There is a wrestling match going on, and they are wrestling with us day and night. I pray that every satanic wrestling against your destiny shall come to naught. And the sixth activity of the demonic that is really affecting us in these last days is that they accuse us day and night before our God. They are accusing us day and night before our God, according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, day and night. Those are the six dangerous activities of the demonic these days that is affecting us terribly. And to sit down and take no action would be a terrible disaster. Why? 
is it? That there is scarcity of prophets that can love handle the enemy. Why? Why is it that the enemy that is supposed to be afraid of most of us is not really afraid? Why, why is it? What is giving the enemy the audacity to come to our dream life and begin to harass us? What is this? Why, what is all this about? What's the problem? Jesus explained to us very clearly why in Mark chapter 3 verse 23, the reason why. And this is where prayer is necessary today. And we must get ready to pray some serious prayers. Mark chapter 3 verse 23. If you are there, say yes. Mark 3.23. Are you ready? And he called them unto him. Are you there? And said unto them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? How can Satan cast out Satan? What a deep statement. And he said, he said it to them in a parable. That parable is relevant to us today. How can Satan cast out Satan? How? How? One of the most powerful men of God that I know, the man is in England now, very powerful man of God. Early in his ministry, anytime he preaches salvation, no problem. There are testimonies. He preaches holiness, no problem. There are testimonies. He preaches prosperity, no problem. There are testimonies. He preaches motivation, no problem. There are testimonies. But anytime he has to confront a demon, the demon used to humiliate him. They don't respond to anything he's saying. They don't even answer him at all. They just laugh at him. And he felt, he felt very embarrassed. So he went to the Lord in prayer. He said, Father, every other thing is working. But any time I confront the demonic, I'm always embarrassed in the place. The Lord said, Son, how many wives does your father have? Seven. Who is your mother? Is number what? Five. How many male children are in the family of seven wives? Say, I'm the only one. Do you remember that when you were young in that polygamous home, your mother did all kinds of magic and juju and sorcery to keep you alive? Say yes. Do you remember you used to have a waistband and a neckband? That you have to carry around so that the witches in the house will not kill you. Say, so remember. Say, so yes. What you are trying to cast out is already inside of you. So, how can Satan cast out Satan? So, the man had to go for a deliverance before he could now minister deliverance. This is a very serious matter. 1988. I was in England. And a bishop asked me to follow him to pray for a Nigerian woman who was afflicted. So I followed the bishop. And when we got to the place, this beautiful woman was sitting down was staring at the roof, didn't greet us, we didn't know anything. So the bishop said, that's the woman. That's the woman we've come to pray for. So the bishop went straight to the woman and said, you foul spare. 
I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her in the name of Jesus. Something up her answer from the truth of the woman. Bishop, shut up. So I command you to depart in the name of Jesus. You foul demon, I'm talking to you. Shut up. Be silent and come out in the name of Jesus. The demon said, Bishop, you two, shut up in the name of Jesus. Say, you foul spirits, you can't answer me back. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Blah, 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 blah. He spoke. The demon answered and said, Bishop, if you don't keep quiet and you keep shouting at me, I will tell your friend your secret. And now you foul demon, you can't accuse me. There is no condemnation now to those who are in Jesus Christ. You can't put me under condemnation. I ask you to depart now in the name of Jesus. The demon said, Bishop, May, you remember May? I think he said May 13 or May 5. That you slept with one of our members. Do you remember? Bishop kept quiet and now reversed. I said, Dr. Lukoya, over to you. How can Satan cast out Satan? This is the problem. We're binding witches outside, but there is witch inside. Because witchcraft is rebellion. When there is rebellion in you, when you are trying to cast out witch, as a, you can't walk. How can Satan cast out Satan? It's a very serious matter. Now listen to these hard facts. Number one. Darkness does not fight darkness. What did I say just now? Oh, no, they don't fight each other. Act fact number two. It is a wicked deception to attempt to confront darkness with darkness. It's a wicked deception. It is a wicked deception to attempt to confront darkness with darkness. Many, many years ago, at a village called Asoton, close to Ondo town, the great apostle Babalala was there. And like his practice, any time he has finished a crusade, he will go to the river. That was there too. Because people drank from river. There was no tap water. You go to the river to pray on the river before the passion. So he went to the river. He prayed on the river. As he prayed on the river, normally after he has finished praying on the river, people rush to the river to collect water and drink. As he prayed on the river, with a smile on his face, he said, <laughs> if you know that you are possessed, please don't drink that water. With a smile on his face, there was a woman there. She was the mother of Israel in the church. Everybody was drinking water. She should have quickly dodged and refused to drink. But because his mother in Israel, I said, Ha, I don't drink this water now. These people will think that I'm something. But I was something. She drank the water, and pandemonium was set loose. 
she somersaulted, she tore up a rapper. And in the full glare of congregation, they found out with two male organs and one female one. Mother in the Israel. So during, during harvest now, they will put the woman at the front who will be praying prayer for people. Two male organs. How can Satan cast out Satan? Three. The darkness within punctures holy respect. The darkness you have within makes the enemy to disrespect you. It punctures holy respect. That was what happened to the sons of Sceva in Acts of Apostles, chapter 19, when they went to the demonic and said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, we command you to go. The Bible says the demon tore them into pieces. They have no recognition in hell. They have no recognition in heaven. The demon said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, but who are you? Four. The mystery of demon disobedience is the enemy within. The mystery of demon disobedience is what? The enemy within. The reason you give command and the demons will not listen is because part of them, you see. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? So when I say pray, if you like, I'll be shaking your head like this. <laughs> if you like, deal with yourself. Deal with yourself. If you like. This is not uh, playing with the enemy now. You need to deal with yourself. You need fire and iron to enter into you. So that whatever is making the enemies to disrespect you have to go. It was at Osho the bus stop. Osho the bus stop here in Lagos. A girl entered the bus. And sat down. Somebody said, Move. The guy said, Who are you talking to? Move. It's okay for daring to say I should move. Let your neck turn to one side. And right then the boss, the man's neck began to turn and turn like this. The people were say, ah, what kind of thing is this? This girl has commanded a, a man's neck to turn, and it has turned. Ah. So they quickly went and called the conductor. Conductor came and saw what the girl had done. He said, ah, no, my niche will leave. What kind of girl is this? And the girl turned on the conductor and said, you? Talking to me like that? I withdraw the strength of your bladder, begin to urinate. And on the spot, the conductor began to urinate in his trouser. You see the urine coming out. Ah. Say, driver, park, driver, park, 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 <laughs> park. Immediately the driver park, everybody rushed out. But there were two brothers there who were going to a prayer meeting. So they boldly went to the girl and said, ah, what kind of we command in Jesus and stand up and follow us. Follow us. And she stood up and actually followed them. And they took her to their prayer meeting. About 17 of them in that prayer meeting. So they put the girl at the center. They reported to the coordinator. This is, we've met this girl in the bus. She was exhibiting satanic power. Let us pray deliverance prayer for her. And so they gathered around. 
the Satan which is Lord, is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. The girl allowed them to finish the singing. They said, Hold on. Before you pray, you, you are part of us. You, you slept with Funke, so so did. So you can't pray for me. You, you cannot pray for me. You are stealing your husband's money. You can't pray for me. You, you, you. And she dismissed 15 people that they cannot pray for. 17 prayer warriors say, I will carry Jesus up and throw Satan away. Up, 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 Jesus. But as far as the girl was concerned, only two of them were qualified to sing. This is why there is plenty of powerlessness in our meetings now. That's why we have plenty of people who are prophets, prophets who have no dream, no vision, no information, no voice, nothing. What, what, what are you prophesying? What prophet are you? Prophets and prophetesses, the spirit of God is still raping you. Ah, <laughs> we need to review some certain things. But the, the question is, how can Satan cast out Satan? Number five. The devil oppress a primitive trade by battle. The devil oppress a primitive trade by battle. Before you got born again, if you have received something from the devil and you have not returned it, it will act as a point of ridicule for you now. The devil operates a primitive trade by battle. Number six, every enemy occupied territory in our lives is a point of affliction and attack. Every where the enemy is occupying in our life, whether it's our lips, it's our eyes, it's our legs, is a point of affliction and attack. So our major problem then in dealing with the demonic is the enemy within. The enemy within. The enemy within is like a zoo inside us. The enemy within bind our spiritual mouth. The enemy within the anoints us. The enemy within reduces our spiritual fire. The enemy within blocks our deliverance. The enemy within reinforces stagnancy in our lives. May you not be stagnant in Jesus' name. The enemy within ensures limitation. The enemy within perfects failure. The enemy within encourages counterattack, counterattack, counterattack. The enemy within constructs hard yokes for us to carry. The enemy within empowers stronghold. The enemy within initiates satanic mockery. Then we get the laughing. The enemy within welcomes external arrows. The enemy within breaks our spiritual edge. You know that is the edge of protection. That's supposed to protect all children of God. The enemy within breaks that edge. 
The enemy within sucks our spiritual power. The enemy within invites external enemy. The enemy within pollutes our dream life. The enemy within deafens our spiritual ears. The enemy within blinds our spiritual eyes. The enemy within encourages bad dreams. The enemy within puts petrol on lust in our heart. And as far as lust is in your heart, you cannot deal with the demonic. It's a lie. For the enemy to come against you and to succeed, for the enemy to disregard your command and disrespect your prayer, there must be an enemy within. That's why Jesus said, How can Satan cast out Satan? The enemy within provides a landing space for the aircraft of darkness. The enemy within is the point of satanic accusation. What you are doing, the enemy is accusing you, accusing you, accusing you. The enemy within gives that power easy access to your life. The enemy within prevents you from fighting back when the enemy comes in your vision and in your dream. The enemy within enables that power to continue to torment your life. The enemy within. I was sharing something last week at the headquarters. A sister had a dream. In the dream, they took her to a shop where they sell coffins. The coffins in the shop were in different colors. Red, pink, blue, white. So they said, this is the shop we are taking you to. You have to buy one of these coffins. Pick the one you like. And because there was no fire, because there was an enemy within her too, she could not say that, no, 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 no. If anybody has to die, it's you. So I'm not buying any coffee. She had no spiritual consciousness to say that. So she just pointed at the pink one. So this is the one you like. It's okay, fine. So now, we command you to enter. She said, no, uh, I can't enter now. Okay, if you can't enter, we'll help you to carry it home. So somebody carried the coffin and followed her. And she woke up. There, the sickness started straight away. The doctors could not know what is going on. Nobody could understand what was wrong with her. And she was at the point of death before she now cried out about the kind of dream she had. But that kind of dream ought not to be possible if there is no enemy within. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh unto me. He found nothing in me. This is what we are talking about. So, we need to deal with this enemy within before it deals with us and disgraces us, although we call ourselves prophets. You must have heard me sharing this before. Let me share it again today before you start praying. I was in Paris many years back. We finished our, we finished our morning service. And a Nigerian woman came to meet me and said, uh, Dr. Daniel, uh, could you please help us? In, uh, 11 o'clock today, to go and pray for a Nigerian woman who is sick. I said, okay. So we shall come and pick you at 11 o'clock. Thank you very much. It's okay. So by 11 o'clock, they came to pick me. We went somewhere outside Paris. It was, the building was 14th floor. The place we were going was on the 14th floor. So we got to the house. When we were about to enter the lift, the woman who was taking me there, said, Dr. Lucre, let us pray. So we prayed by the lift. And the prayer was like this. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm taking your son, Dr. Lucre, to see this woman. Father, what happened to the last person that I took there? Don't let it happen to him. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I said, ha ha. What kind of prayer is this? What happened to the last person? I said, don't worry, sir, we have prayed. <laughs> so we got there, 14th floor. When I entered, I met this beautiful Nigerian lady sitting on the floor, staring at the roof. It looked as if somebody has been beating her. The husband too was a very handsome man. I know the demonic does not recognize handsomeness. So, so I, I started asking, her, what's wrong with her? The man said, I don't know, sir, but at 12 midnight, she go mad. And when she run mad, she throws things away, she has thrown the television away, she has thrown every other thing away. So I went to her. I said, Madam, good evening. No answer. I said, Madam, say, I love Jesus. She didn't talk. And I said, Madam, say, I plead the blood of Jesus at that level. She now looked at me and said, Point of correction. We do not plead the blood of Jesus, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I said, Okay. Say, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I did not know that it was already 12 o'clock. Jump! She just jumped up. Before we could say Jesus' love, her, her hand were on the throat of the woman who brought me. The one I was praying for me downstairs. And she was strangulating the woman. Myself and her husband, we tried to pull I away. We could not. It was as if she had the strength of 20 men. We could not. We tried. We could not. And before my eyes, I could see the black eye of the woman going inside. The white ones were coming out. She was already dripping with saliva in the mouth. I said, hey. So I quickly ran to one corner to say, Lord, I am in trouble. What am I going to do here now? Because... I knew that once you finish with the woman who brought me, <laughs> but I was going to be the next person. So I, I went to corner to pray. The Lord said, Son, bind the spirit of Olumbo Olumba. Olumbo Olumba, France, Paris. <laughs> Say something, you better obey me. So, as the woman was, as the woman slumped to the ground, because the woman actually fainted, as she slumped to the ground, I said, I bind you, spirit of what I mentioned now. Immediately I said that. Instantly, the lion like look on her face just cleared. And she said, uh-uh. Darling, she faced the other. She faced the other and said, Darling, who are these people? What are they doing here? Who is this woman on the floor? Who has been beating me? The husband says, Anytime she got violent and he could not control her, he would start giving her blues to control her. That's why her face was holy. Who, what happened to this woman? Why is she lying on the floor in our house? That was how God saved me. Maybe I will not be here talking to you today. <laughs> so, the only body that has the power to rough handle the demonic is the prophetic. But for you to be able to do that, seven things are necessary. One, total surrender of your life. Your song should be all to Jesus, I surrender. Not some to Jesus, I surrender. All must be surrendered. Two, 
total repentance. Three. Thorough spiritual checkup. Check yourself up thoroughly. Four. Strong warfare prayers. The kind of prayer we're going to start praying just now. Strong warfare prayers. Five. Complete deliverance. Six. Brutal honesty with yourself. Now, brutally honest with yourself. Don't pamper yourself. Don't, don't pamper yourself at all. You are brutally honest with yourself. And lastly, holiness and pureness. You must live a holy life. You must be pure. One of the greatest battles we'll ever have to fight is the battle we're describing here today. And once you win that battle of the enemy within, then binding the enemy outside will not be a serious problem for you. Rise up on your feet now. I'm going to pray with you. After praying with you, I'm going to ask you to pray. This prayer I'm going to pray with you will open doors to your own prayers you are going to pray for yourself. All eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this global conference. And I thank you for your grace upon your children that are either watching us or are here presently. I thank you because I know that you can do all things. There is nothing beyond your power. Lord, we are all gathered here before you. And I stand here as your servant. And I decree by the decree of heaven that as many people as are listening to me now, that are under the sound of my voice, whatsoever enemy is within me, whatsoever enemy is in the root, whatsoever enemy is in the foundation, Whatsoever enemy is in the head, whatsoever enemy is in the stomach, whatsoever enemy is in the leg, whatsoever enemy is in anybody's life that is making the enemy to disrespect you, that is making your voice not to carry weight, I arrest that enemy now. Let them be arrested. 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 In the name of Jesus. It's happening. It's happening. Yes. Anyone in this garden now, and you are under the bondage of the witchcraft of your mother, I command you to be released now. In the name of Jesus, Basetina Katendeaba. It's happening. That's the first person. That's the second person. Today is today. Anyone in this garden now, 
And any time you want to move forward, there's a voice, there's a force that pulls you backward. Receive your deliverance now. Receive, 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 Somebody have this woman. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Aha! Enough is enough. Yes. Anything you have eaten or swallowed that the enemy is now using as a ladder to attack you. Bapata, Rikapani Kayaba, Riba Saponda Kayabo Shanta Rabo Santa, Bakati Arikata. Yes! Get out now in the name of Jesus! people are standing there. Let anyone who has received arrows from familiar spirits just at the count of seven from here let there be volcanic eruption of your power and let the arrows of familiar spirits arrows of marine powers begin to go out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. You have been hiding for years. Today is the exposure day. You cannot continue to hide. Every cryptic power, every power that has been in hiding, and you have been tormenting the children of God, I command you to lose your hold now. Lose your hold. 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 In the name of Jesus. Cannot hide. Now we have arrived at an arena. It's your turn to pray. Your turn to pray. Please. <laughs> this is not respectable prayer. If you pray, if you fall down, continue to pray on the floor. If you pray, you are feeling as if you are going to faint, sit down. But to keep quiet will be a disaster. To go away from this place and the enemy is still disrespecting you will be very terrible. Can you shout this loud and clear? Let nobody's voice be louder 
than yours. Can you say fire? me. That's the prayer. Can you shut fire? Of oh God! Purge me! Purge me! Purge me! Purge me! Purge me! Continue now! Oh, put your mouth up, 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 put your mouth up. Back up on the car, I was up on the car, I was in Teraba. Ribos upon the car, I was in Teraba Sata. Continue, continue, continue. Receive the fire. 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 Aha! 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 Enough is enough. Bakapola kaya bo shendera bo sapola katanda. Ribo sapola kaya bo shendera.